Good morning, happy Sabbath, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're joining us from. Thank you so much again for coming and making time to be with us uh, to study the themes in the book of John. We are in lesson three, the backstory, the prologue. We have been going through the book of John from various chapters, not like chapter one, two, three, but we've been jumping here and there. It is for the good of the word of the Lord. I'm joined by my wonderful panel again, uh, just doing this, uh, studying with you, and I pray that you bring out your Bible, your quarterly lesson, and just be ready to be taught by the Lord. I'll ask that Chris open for us with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you have invited us this morning to be in your presence to study your word. We praise you, Lord, that you have given us this living word to um, reveal yourself to us. Therefore, Lord, we ask as we open its pages to understand more of your love, we pray that you'll open our hearts to receive the light of your word. We ask for these gifts in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, I want that the panel introduce themselves and tell us what they'll be taking us through, starting from you, Ted. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Uh, uh, my name is Ted Langat, and I'll be taking us through the word made flesh mm. and also hearing or not hearing the word. Amen. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Mm -hmm. My name is Marion and I'll be taking us through in the beginning the divine logos. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. My I'm going to be leading through the Wednesday part re the reappearing themes of belief or unbelief. Mm -hmm. Amen. And your name? <laughs> My name is Chris Paul Megera. Thank Ka you. Karen Busana. Thank you. So the first week when we started this lesson, we dealt with the end of John, rather. We started with why, the reason why the book of John was written. And today, we are going to start from the beginning. And that is why our key text is John 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you grew up as a young child going through Sabbath school lessons as an adventurer, this is surely that one, that one verse that you memorized. And when we will be asked to say the memory verses, it surely should be one of those that you could remember. John 1.1. 1, 1. But really, what does it mean to talk about the beginning and the word? And the word that was with God, and the word that was God. You're going to look at this first in a different light. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will be able to illuminate to you, and you'll realize who the word was. When I use the word who, it actually personifies the word, and who was this with God from the beginning. You know, um, throughout the book of John, John tries to explain to us the person of Jesus and who Jesus is really. We say that John had a friend, like a very close relationship with Jesus. And all through this, his book, his major aim is to show us who is Jesus and point us to Jesus as his friend. He has found a very personal friend, the light that he has been looking for all through his life. And he also wants us by extension to understand who Jesus is. So this week, we are going to start from the beginning and you're going to really majorly dwell in the book of John chapter one. We might touch on other chapters, but our major study is really just John chapter one all the way to verse eight. And we will summarize major themes that will keep reappearing in the book of John all through this, the study of the lesson. And we now first start from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 5, in the beginning, the divine logos, which Marion will lead us through. Yes, I'll just pick up from where you've set us off. Um, in the beginning, it's an interesting way to begin um, the whole book. Uh, because when you... 
initially used the word in the beginning you are essentially trying to bring your readers mm. uh back to when it all begins if i am to say that yeah. and but the wording that john uses is absolutely very particular in the sense uh when he says in the beginning was the word i think uh, we'll just run through the whole uh five verses to also just have an understanding so this is john chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men mm. and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not mm. and and so to the just from the beginning in the from the onset of the word in the beginning it essentially takes us further to further back to a time when there was no identifiable beginning mm. and what do we mean by that um in the beginning is bringing the reader to an understand that um essentially it's telling us that Jesus Christ was or Jesus Christ has no beginning date when he's saying in the beginning the reader is brought to the place where he is being essentially it's the beginning of time mm. for them to have a knowledge of or Christ is being made known to them at that time mm -hmm. it doesn't negate the fact that Christ has been in existence even before that mm -hmm. meaning largely that Christ cannot be defined by time he's not bound essentially by time Amen. and even space as we live and come to understand mm -hmm. and so Christ has been in existence from eternity past mm -hmm. and so he says in the beginning it goes on to say in the beginning was the word and the word was with god so we are introduced to the word here and it's specific I, and i think when you peruse in your bible you'll see the word uh the word word is in capital mm -hmm. so um it is in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so who is the word mm -hmm. and the word here reveals a close relation a close intimate relationship and connection between god and christ mm. um we know essentially uh jesus christ is the very manif is elenoit puts it and says uh jesus christ is god's thought made audible mm. and the word here is jesus christ so we are essentially brought he's bringing a relational point where we can see that Christ and God the Father have been in existence together in a very close knit relationship from eternity past mm -hmm. and when you just boil down you, when you read colossians 1 verse 16 and 17 it says for by him were all things created mm -hmm. that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things exist mm. so essentially um all that we can i think a certain author says mm. that um anything that god cannot do simply doesn't exist mm. and we can just look around us when you perceive of nature and everything around us we can just see that all this is by the very hands of jesus christ mm. because scripture has revealed to us that all things exist because he does mm. when you go uh, down to john 1:18 we it says i will read no man hath seen god at any time the only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father he hath declared him amen i find it interesting mm. that uh john uses that specific wording in the bosom of the father as he himself is said to have leaned upon the bosom of the father mm. i think we had seen that in previous lessons speaking greatly of the oneness that is between the father and the son he say uh, he says he 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 exists um the wording the specific wording is um the only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father mm. we know it is not a foreign concept because christ equally speaks of it in john in the prayer of john 17 mm. and specifically when you read verse 21 it says that they 
all may be one as thou father art in me mm-hmm. and i in thee mm-hmm. that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent us amen i love the oneness that is brought in mm-hmm. here so we have this foundation that god the father god the son have been in existence from eternity past and they are one but Going further, we see it is the same oneness that God desires us to have first within ourselves and having been one with, our, uh, with ourselves, as he says, that we can be one in us, in us now that our unity may be joined to theirs, as it says. And so uh, in speaking of the beginning and, and the lessons we can learn from here, um, Ellen White in the book Desire of Ages, page 19, it says, From the days of eternity, the Lord Jesus Christ was one with the Father. He was the image of God, the image of his greatness and majesty, the outshining of his glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Myron, um, for letting us know the close relationship that existed in the beginning as in when we were being told about this thing, you know, the close relationship that has ever existed between Jesus Christ and God, his father. And that brings us to the question which I'll uh, pose to Chris Paul. Why is it important for us to understand that Christ has been there from the beginning or even before the beginning when we actually, he's introduced to us. Mm. Why is it important for us to understand this truth? And what would we lose if Jesus were in any way just a mere created being, you know? Uh, thank you so much. Mm. I think it's a very interesting uh, question. And as you put it, uh, and even as uh, Marion has, uh, has just explained it to us, uh, the pre-existence of mm-hmm. Christ uh, before even man was created and even the entire of mm-hmm. creation was, uh, was made is in itself a mystery mm-hmm. how Christ existed before and how he and the father as we have just read are one in John 17 21 are mm-hmm. one I him in the father and the father in him mm-hmm. this uh, uh, the pre-existence of Christ thus becomes the foundation of the hope we have in Christ because it means that the creation process was not an afterthought that God had to come up with mm. but it, pre- it, it was in his mind way before even we existed mm. the intentionality, the purpose of God to create Amen. and not only to create but to redeem mm. God thought about us even before we were in existence. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of his pre-existence. And, so, um, and also, his pre-existence is beyond our, what we can think or imagine. And mm-hmm. thus, um, it is a mystery. And being a mystery, uh, I like what Illinois says, that the, crea- the mystery of Christ, Christ's pre-existence, his divine nature, mm-hmm is the mystery of all mis- mysteries mm-hmm. and it's also the mystery that explains all other mysteries mm-hmm. that is quite complex just to wrap our minds around <laughs> it and the beauty of that is that if we do not understand that thus we lose not only everything but even we lose the very foundation of why we exist mm-hmm. thank you you know, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, it's a verse that when Paul is writing this, Paul is writing this with a lot of intelligence that he says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in life, in loves. Like Christ already chose us. You know, God was already thinking about us, you know, and as Chris Paul has already told us that even the redemption story was not like an afterthought. Christ was not an afterthought. Christ was there and has been there forever. So this should give us a lot of hope. When we are told to believe in Christ, we are believing in someone that has been there all through forever. And what comfort does it give you? 
we've been hurt by people we believe in, you know, we meet, we think that we've been friends for 10 years, so that should count for something, but betrayal still happens. But with Christ, it is different. Betrayal never happens. If anything, it is us who betray Christ. We move swiftly to our second title um, of this lesson, um, The Word Made Flesh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was actually God. Talk to us about that, Ted. Thank you. Mm. Uh, I I love how the lesson writer really takes us on a roller coaster. Mm. He starts with uh, the signs, showing us the divinity of Christ. Mm. Then this time he takes us to the prologue, reminding us of actually the divinity of mm. Christ. Mm. As Myron's talked about, it was he was in the beginning. See, in the beginning, and something I love, Myron has pointed, that the word is, the W is in capital. Yes. And we know as in our schooling, mm. uh, proper nouns, proper nouns mm. start with a capital, meaning mm. that this is actually not just any other phrase, mm. but this is indicating someone. Mm. And I love how John here begins saying that in the beginning, there was a word. And the word was with God. Mm. And nothing was made. You know, and it, 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 it gives us the sense of our belonging. Mm. That the salvation whom we call Christ, the word, was before us. As Chris, as Chris Paul has talked about. And uh, the word being made flesh, it gives us a sense of not only hope, but also it, it directs us and accentuates rather even our acts of worship. Mm. Because you see, f to say that the word was with God and the word came down and dwelt among us, this actually gives us, I don't know if it is a sense of entitlement, it's not even entitlement, but it, it shows how we are so much loved. Mm. That the one who was in the beginning, who was with God, could come and dwell with us. Now, what does this even tell us? As earlier on in, in Exodus uh, 25, verse 8, uh, the Lord tells them, you know, make, uh, have them make a sanctuary that I may dwell sanctuary. with them. And, and, you know, this actually is a God who wants a relationship with us. For him to say, do it so that I may dwell with them. Mm. And now here we see John explaining that Logos is a person. And this person who was in the beginning with God has come down in flesh to dwell among us mm. what does this say mm. it literally when i'm thinking about it 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 makes me wonder more because i actually had never seen that capital w really has changed my perspective <laughs> i like when i was starting i said we memorized this verse that has really changed my perspective <laughs> and, and and the more i think about it and even mm -hmm. as we're going uh through the next uh a title this has actually even given me much more mm. understanding of christ being that this word we talk about everyone we tell we tell each other that uh you know in order to grow we we we, we engage in prayer mm. and reading the word of god mm. now this word came down in flesh and dwelt, and dwelt among us mm. to show us on how we should live to manifest what was already written about him, mm. to show us how we are to relate with him. Earlier on, we saw how he healed, how he ministered to people. Mm. And this word is what we receive our salvation from. Mm. Now, can you imagine such a magnificent being coming down to dwell mm. with us? Mm. If it does not put us in a spot where we are to, to dwell with him, you know, it it should give us the humility to say, you know what, if you did this for us, I want to know more of this mm -hmm. word. And I love how John really loves to depict that this was a person that dwelt with us. And uh, if if we can go through to 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 the next, I'd, I'd like uh, if Chris Paul can read for us John one twelve to thirteen. John chapter one verse twelve to thirteen. It says. But as many as received him, mm. to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, Amen. which were not born 
which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now you see that, I hope you have heard these words. Let me, let me say that. Now you see, uh, by divinity having humanity, it shows us how we ought to even live. But by, as you said in verse 12, by those who believe, we gain the titleship of sons and daughters of God. And now, my question is, when we hear these words, do we actually accept these words? Mm. The things we talk about, even when we say, read the word of God, it is literally of Christ. We are trying to draw ourselves closer to Christ. The essence of it is, can you be able to have a willing heart to accept Christ, who is the word of God? At the end of it all, we are being pointed to Christ because he himself says that no, other, no one can go to the Father but by through him. And later on, we see even in Matthew, uh, he's, he says that all authority has been given to him. So what does this say? And I'd like to skip to the next uh, before you title, skip, but you can, yeah. Before you skip, I want Marion to talk to us about something, or rather answer to us this question, where what does this tell us about the reality of God's love for humanity, the fact that the word of God has been made flesh, the fact that in Exodus 25 verse 8, God tells the Israelites to make a sanctuary that he may dwell among them. Um, it's a it's a wonderful question mm -hmm. in that um, the scripture reference when talking about God dwelling among men. Mm -hmm. um, we know even in the times of the Israelites, the verse is drawn from Exodus twenty five eight. We know that the uh, not the disciples the children of Israel had come to a point where they were telling Moses, you know, you just go and talk to God mm. and then you come and tell us mm. what he will say. They, there was almost that fear that is not biblical. Mm. And now we see here that God is saying, okay, I want to dwell with you. Mm. I mean, I find it a big mystery. Mm. And even in a present day, it is the same message for us. The Lord desires to dwell with us and among us. Mm. And it I love that the New Testament takes it further to say that he may dwell in us. Yes. I mean, mm. I don't know how much closer mm. that can get. Mm -hmm. uh, when you come to the New Testament in John 14, 1 to 3, when it says, let not your heart be troubled, mm. believe in God, believe also in, in me. me. In my father's house are many mansions. Mm. If it are not, I would have told you. Mm. I go to prepare a place for you. Mm. And that where I am, ye may be also. So we also see the same theme that God, he has gone to prepare a place for us. Mm. Now he wants us to be with him as well. Mm. And just to crown that, to just sum up the beautiful uh, lesson of love for, uh, that God has for humanity is, mm. I can't go without reading Romans 8, 38 and 39. It says, for I am persuaded mm. that neither death nor life, mm. nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height. You can imagine the, the distance from uh, heaven to earth, mm -hmm. how, how, how distant it might be. Nor height, nor depth, nor any, cre ne nor any other creature shall be able to do what? To separate us from mm. the love of God, mm. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm. And that is the very depth of how Christ loves us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, hearing or not hearing the word, you had started to talk to talk to us about that. And now we are in John chapter 1, verse 9 to 13. Please. Uh, before I forget something, we're talking about the word made flesh. Mm. Meaning that it is a living word. Yes. Meaning that the word of God is not theory, mm. but a practical thing. It is living. Mm. In the same sense of what our faith should be, mm. 
living faith. Living faith. Now, mm-hmm. hearing or not hearing the word, as we've depicted that the word is Christ. Mm. And we usually hear this thing that, uh, are you accepting Christ? You know, mm. Do you hear his calling and, mm. such, and such questions? Because mm. we understand that uh, you may have heard, but you do not accept it. Mm. As the Pharisees last week talked about them, uh, you, you find that they heard, but they did not accept in their hearts. Mm. And it's a, it's, a, it's a good question because I love how we've just read from John 1, uh, verse 1 to 4, depicting and highlighting that actually Christ is the word. As we live in our day-to-day lives, do we even make the effort to actually mm. hear his calling? Mm. When we read about him, I, 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 like, I don't want to say the word of God now, now we're talking about Christ. When we read more of knowing about him and understanding more that we may also be transformed, mm. do we even make the effort to accept his calling? Mm. Because you see, his desire is to save us from whatever bondage. If uh, Chris Paul could read for us verse, uh, verse 9. John chapter 1 verse 9. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, you see that this, he is the one who gives us light. Mm. And he gives all who come to the world. Understanding that by him, as as uh, I read a quote here from uh, C.S. Lewis, he uh, says, uh, "I believe in Christianity as I believe in the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but but because by it I see, I see it. everything else." Mm-hmm. What does that tell us? Literally, we cannot peruse through life without this light, because this light helps us to see everything else, how we relate to people, how we even do our work, how we even engage, you know, with our family, with, with our loved ones. It is everything. And it is the essence of, are you hearing this word? Are you even practicing this word? And I love how John implicates that it, it is to all, but it is a sure depiction that not all of us accept this word. As we've seen uh, last week, the Pharisees, they did not accept this word. And in uh, Chris Paul, verse 10 and to, to 11, Verse 10, it says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Verse 11, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. So you see, because we were, they were not just hearing of him, but they had so much noise around them. The noise of their own pride, mm. the noise of self, the noise of their own glory, mm. and it shows that they had no conviction. They were so focused on the noise of law abidings and routines, they did not take time to even have that understanding, a deeper understanding of this word. And that's why you find that they were so focused on the Moses than understanding that Moses was trying to show that somebody else is going to come and which is this word. And John begins very well showing us that it was there before everything else. And I love how uh, the lesson writer here warns us real quick in, in Romans uh, 9, 11, 9 uh, 11. We understand that uh, many of us, we, we, we know Christianity, as, as we've read from the quote of C.S. Uh, Lewis, but we find that whenever we ourselves fall, we don't want to be looked down upon. We want favor and we want, you know, it's okay. We, but we always tend to to have a hard time when it comes to other people, mm-hmm. especially who've been in the church, and we have a hard time uh, wanting to pray for them. Say, so, oh, you know, they've done this, the, you know, adultery, all these things, or they're back to fornication. And I love how uh, we are warned, as 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 uh, if you read uh, Romans eleven twenty four, we are warned that you know, let us not boast against those who have actually even fallen, mm-hmm. because this is not a light that is in us. It is not that light, as we've read in John 1, 9, that that is to all people. And a quick question, you know, as we've gone through our week, have you had time to hear these words? Even as you read your Bible and do your devotion, have you actually in your heart 
hurt them to the point you're actually doing them mm-hmm. you know i i i don't i don't know why it is hearing or not hearing because there's also the aspect of listening but the aspect the, the, the point that you've heard these words but you've not acted upon it you've not accepted it in your heart for it to dwell with you is actually a a, a very dangerous thing to do and i love how we are shown that this word is not just a mere written text but it is a living word it is christ himself now i ask do you take time to hear christ do you take that time to away from the noise of everything in your world your you know your job your family even yourself your desires to take time to learn of christ mm. to hear his word that you read each and every day mm. good question to you and to us mm. and in conclusion of course we can read for us john 20 31 john chapter 20 verse 31 It says but these things are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name Amen Again we are being directed to Christ showing that this word the living word is Christ and by him it is where we receive our salvation mm-hmm. And that's why as we've seen him as as i love how now the lesson writer go shows us how we've seen him attend to people minister to them you know healing uh, re- re- relieving people from physical you know pain sickness you know even death and and even demon possession and this is the same word that gives us salvation that him who formed us is the one who also redeems us and that's why i ask you know as he's guiding us through the word that we read each and every day it is through him that we find release from sin it is through him that we are saved so i ask are you paying attention to hear the word to hear christ his calling even as you are calling yourself a christian coming to church each and every day but deep down are you in the sense of hearing for true conviction that you may listen to him that you may trust in him and accept his changes in your life mm. and i pray that we may not be found wanting that we actually having it as noise but not hearing it as something mm. important into our lives mm. in deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 14 and 19 that is after moses had read to the children of israel the blessings of you know at this time moses is preparing to exit the stage and he's prepared the children of israel you know i've taught you this i've taught you that and in verse chapter 30 verse 14 and 19 he says but the word is very near you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it i have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may do what may live When the word has come to dwell amongst us we have been presented with the choice of either hearing or not hearing and both present to us a curse or a blessing choose ye today he who you want to follow and i hope like joshua says in joshua chapter 24 that as for me and my house we will do what we will serve the lord we will hear of him we will be taught by him uh we move to reappearing themes there are themes that will keep on reappearing in this book of john the theme of belief and unbelief We are moving from hearing the word there is hearing of the word and now we are coming to the theme of doing what believe or unbelief and will be led by brother Kirk Chris on this Thank you so much uh, for that I think the lessons uh, uh, the lessons you're picking up from the themes of hearing and hearing the and uh, not hearing the word and how the word the logos I was introduced by our sister Marion have kind of created the foundation upon which we are going to uh, look at what does it mean when there is this reappearing theme of uh, belief and unbelief throughout um, the book of John and um, the the idea of belief and unbelief is quite 
uh, abundant through the book of uh, John mm. and the it is the belief or unbelief or faith or lack of it mm. is a response to the word it is the the response that uh, is either is is the word that God expects of us as we've read to them that received him in first John in John chapter 1 verse 12 to them but to them that received him to them that he gave power to re, to become the sons of God thus belief becomes the foundation upon which we receive the new identity mm. as part of the family of God mm. and i believe when God created humanity he created us with the freedom to choose the freedom of choice and even to the point at which that though man falls into sin in spite of the word of God being there, mm. the word, the intentionality of God in the creation of man, despite that being there and his purpose that he intended man to obey, to have life in abundance, despite that being there, the response of man of not hearing and not uh, obeying that word and hence falling into sin and the extent to which much more God goes to save man in giving of himself to save man shows the capacity or rather the the expense that God had to endure to achieve for us mm. the freedom of choice. Mm. The freedom of choice of whether to believe him mm. or not to mm. believe him. Mm. And to believe him I be, and God let's remember that God is not neutral in whether we believe him yes. or not believe him. Mm. Though he has given us freedom, it does not mean that he is neutral. As we re as we've just read in John chapter 1 verse uh, verse 10 uh, verse 10 there it says uh, that you he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Verse 9 was was quite powerful. It says that he was the true light which lighted every man that comes into the world. Mm. God's word being light to those who intentionally refuse to believe must resist. They must have a great struggle to believe, not to believe that which God has revealed. Mm. Because Somewhere in the book of Malachi, God presents himself as the son of righteousness that rises with healing in his wings. Unless someone intentionally closes their eyes to the revealed love of God as, as the light of the world from his word, he will see it. He will see what God has revealed in his word and and, and, and that's... And that's um, receive him. In John chapter 3 uh, uh, the, the servant of the Lord writes and says um, uh, that this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men they loved darkness yes. rather than light. Right. Mm. So the condemnation is not that you have not seen the light but the love men love darkness as opposed to light. Mm. So I think the question we need to ask ourselves, what, where do we find mm. ourselves in? Mm. Because in the light of the word of God, mm. God has given to us everything and en anything that we may need to have eternal life in him. Mm. And if we are lost, it will be by our own intentional, mm. our own intentional decision not to believe what God has revealed to us. Mm. And much more than that, you see, um, our the, the foundation of our faith in God, I love what, what a friend of mine just shared with me recently, says that confidence begets confidence. Mm. Love begets love. Yeah. Also, faith begets faith. faith. Mm. Our faith in God does not just float around on no, no foundation. Mm. That faith is founded on his identity his his eternal love 
his faith in us. So our belief, God believes in us. That is powerful. God believes in us. Even believe our belief in him in John first John chapter four yeah, verse sixteen verse 8 it's god is love and we love him why because he first loved Love us. us therefore our faith in god is a response already to the faith he already has in us amen, amen. thank you Powerful. thank you you know um there's always this question of who are believers and who are unbelievers the lesson writer labors to explain to us the difference between these two he says that those who believe have openness. Like a believer is someone who's open. Someone that even when Christ rebukes him, when even Christ confronts him with the truth, he does not run away. They still stay with Christ. You know, this is someone who has found the light. This is someone who's like, hey, I have realized that Christ has shown me my weakness is anger. My weakness is unforgiveness. My weakness is bitterness. And I need to stick by him so that he shows me more and more. We have said that in him there is light and darkness does not comprehend the light that comes from Christ. And then the, question, the other answer is, who is this unbeliever? Unbeliever is someone who comes to fight with Jesus. Like Christ clearly tells you, Ramona, this thing that you are doing is not right. But I put a fight. I want to resist him. I want to rebel. And that is really just the difference between a believer and unbeliever. That you, you, the truth about Sabbath has been brought to you. The truth about obeying your parents has been brought to you. But you still want to argue with Christ through philosophies, through everything that you think that looks like it is right. It is humility versus pride. Last week we said the reason why the Pharisees didn't believe in Christ is really the problem of their heart. We move to another reappearing theme that is glory. We've come from unbelief and unbelief. I'll give us time to comment on some of the aspects, but before them, I'll want us to move to the book of John, chapter 17. And this is the prayer of Jesus. Jesus first prayed for himself, then he prayed for the disciples, and then he did what? Prayed for all believers. Do you pray for all believers? <laughs> Do you pray for the disciples of Christ? That's the question that I will ask us. I'll read from verse 1 to 5 of John 17. It says, Jesus spoke this word, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. The pre-existence of Christ again comes here. Another time someone says words similar to this is in Second Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, but I'll really read 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord of the righteous judge will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. You no, know, Christ is coming to Christ and telling him, I have done everything that you sent me to do. We have learned that in John chapter 8 to verse 29, it says that Christ loved to do the things that please God, his father. He has done all these things. And now what is this glory that Christ is talking to us? 
it is quite paradoxical because Christ is almost going to his crucifixion. And this crucifixion is what is referring to as glory. You know, dying on the cross was actually a sin in the book of Deuteronomy. It was a curse, you know, and it was a very shameful death. But Christ is calling this glory. How can the most shameful thing be turned into glory? It can only be turned into glory when Christ is there, when Christ is in the picture. Because the glory that Christ is actually talking about is beyond the cross. It is the glory of reconciliation, reconciling the sinner to his father, God, ensuring that the veil of darkness that existed between us and God because of sin is actually brought down. It is cut into two, that we can boldly approach the throne of grace and obtain mercy from there. And that is what the glory that Christ is referring to. Sometimes it takes a lot of pain for actually us Christians to obtain, because even when Paul is talking about, I have fought the good fight, what is the good fight that Paul was fighting? Being in prison, always running for his life, you know. Paul is even crossing seas. A shipwreck appear, happens. So when we are writing this verse in obituaries, for example, are we sure we have actually, can we get to a point where we say, by the way, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. Can we get to a point where Jesus is coming to his father as in John 17 and telling God, you know what? I have done everything that you asked me to do. And now do what? Glorify me. And then you only to find out that, you know what? The glory is not, you know, as the disciples were thinking that he will come in chariots, fight these Romans, you know, and bring us back our our freedom, the freedom that Christ is talking to us about is beyond the human eyes. And for us to understand that, we have to dwell in the word. As we are coming to the tail end of this lesson, I want us to answer some questions. And these questions will rather talk to us about our personal growth in Christ. The first question is, how has our life or your life changed? You as Ramona, you as Ted, Marion, and also Chris. How has your life changed since you became the son or daughter of God? I'll start with you, Chris. How my life has changed since I became the son of God. Mm. I think... Um, God being my father and being much more than a father to me, mm. a friend, mm. uh, has meant everything to me. Um, I know that I can call upon him when I am sad. Mm. I can uh, depend upon him. Mm. And much more the fact that God is with me all the way is quite a reassuring. It's a source of security in my life. Mm. You see, um, before before I fully... Uh, anchored my faith in God. Mm. So many things used to worry me. Mm. What if I lost my job? Mm. What if um, something happened to my parents and they were not able to provide for me? What will happen to me? Mm. What if uh, I lost these precious friends and I had no other friend? But the fact that Jesus is a friend mm. and I know that Jesus is the friend who will be there, who was there before even I was created, and who will be there throughout eternity, mm. I know I have a foundation that is unshaken Amen. in this life. Amen. And that is really comforting to me, honestly. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a source of stability, no matter what happens. That's why Paul says, um, for the Christian, if Christ had not resurrected mm. in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, mm our faith would have been in vain. Mm. Our faith would have been in vain. But just because Christ made the powerful appearing from the grave in resurrecting, taking up his life, he provides us with a foundation for this life and a hope for the future. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. My personal experience would be 
just by the fact that God is able to call us our sons and daughters is an ultimate privilege. You know, I think somewhere in scripture it says, you know, you're no longer servants. Yeah, but you're now sons and daughters of God. You know, you are not estranged. You know, you can be close to the master and just be a servant. Mm -hmm. But he even pulls you in and even closer and says, you're my son. Almost, and it's the same wording he when he refers to Christ as the Son of God, of course, not to the measure uh, of the relationship that they have, but we have the privilege of being called the sons and daughters of God. And so my personal experience would be just pointing to the relational aspect that we have with our God. I know that religion can, we can have a legal religion and what uh, Paul also talks about when he says a form of godliness. Mm. But now we have an opportunity to relate with him. Mm. You mm. can relate with the one who sits above the whole world. Amen. The God of the universe. Mm. And just uh, in closing, my, my personal experience would be in, in recent uh, Sabbath and even in the study of the lesson, which I would in, largely encourage us to partake in greatly, um, I have been finding a very recurring uh, um, thing in that in each and every Sabbath and in each and every time I sit to study the word, that the Lord has a specific word for me mm. that speaks even to the current season that I may be in. Mm. And and, and I, I do not think it a matter of happenstance. Mm. I know that the Lord is speaking to me. And it, intentionally. It, yeah, intentionally. Mm. So it makes my Christian experience such a very lively and, and real thing rather than sitting and, and, and reading of what just merely as what the Pharisees did and this and, and that, mm. but it becomes a very personal message in that God is speaking to us. And I know it is for you. The Lord desires to speak to you and I pray that you may hear him. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, from a practical aspect, mm. I'd like to say uh, there's been there's been a lot of growth as a person. Mm. I love how David tells uh, Solomon, you know, be strong, uh, therefore, and show thyself a man. Mm. You know, keep the charge of the Lord. You know, showing that even to grow as a man, you need to keep the commandments of God mm. and His statutes. Mm. And uh, through that, I've seen a lot of changes in my mental life, in my mental state, Amen. my health, mm. uh, my spiritual life has grown, and mm. even the clarity, as my brother Crispo has talked about, there's this peace that just overflows, and you sometimes things become really tough, mm. but there's this peace and this confidence. I hope I am getting confidence from God, but this confidence I receive, I have received in life, mm. no matter the outcome, mm. has has really mm. been a great change in my life. Not only that, but also in my relation with people, as I have learned how to love, how to have empathy, mm. how to relate with people. So, uh, it has really have affected in me in all aspects of life, mm. and even understanding that uh, He is the one who gives us the strength to find wealth, as we've been told in Deuteronomy. Mm. For in him we find our, our, our life and breathing through him. So mm. uh, my life has really been centered around him as I've accepted to be called a son. And therefore I have seen a tremendous change in the physical things that we see in life. Mm. So that I can attest. It is a testimony for sure. Amen. And I pray that you will also experience the changes that our finalists have talked about if you are not already experiencing it and maybe you could just type on the comment box and say and tell us how has your life changed since you became a daughter of Christ or a son of Christ and there's something that uh, Marion talked to us about are you reading the word of God just for intellectual conversations so that you can look like you already know the verses, like you memorize them? Or are you reading and wanting to change and wanting the darkness in you to be illuminated? Our closing remarks will come from the book, uh, Steps, uh, not really, Steps to Christ and Desire of Ages. And I'll take this opportunity to encourage us to read the Desire of Ages. Um, you can either read the physical copy or the ebook, which is on the Ellen White uh, estate 
it's an app you can actually download it from google play store and get to read it will help us understand and enrich our study so i'll read two quotes and one comes from the book of john chapter 12 verse 32 and it says if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw men unto me Christ must be revealed to the sinner as the Savior dying for the sins of the world. As we behold the Lamb of God upon the cross of Calvary, the mystery of redemption begins to unfold to our minds and the goodness of God lead us to do what? To repent. We are dying sinners if we don't repent. And now to steps to Christ, page 26 to 27, it says, whenever people make an effort to reform from a sincere desire to do right, it is the power of Christ that is actually drawing them, an influence of which they are unconscious, they are unconscious works upon the soul, and the conscience is quickened, and the outward life is amended. It is through Christ that we are saved. And Christ is still in the business of making sure that all of us are saved. The backstory, the prologue, is that God or Jesus was there in the beginning. And he was there even before the beginning. And he's continuing to exist. And in Revelation, he says it's the Alpha and the Omega. And it will do you a lot of good if you depend on him. Marion, please close for us with a word of prayer. Let's believe and pray. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the study of your word. Thank you that you have reminded us that you have been in existence from eternity past, even now to eternity present, and even to the eternity into the eternity of the future, Lord. You have been our Alpha and Omega and continue to be, Lord. We thank you for the beautiful lessons that you have gleaned from today's lesson. May these words, Lord, not just be uh, a mere to appeal to our intellect, but, Father, that these words will work within us, Lord, to change and to transform us and to help us to walk in newness of life. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.